Over 325 South Park episodes, Kenny has been killed in every way imaginable, with him dying in almost every single episode up until season 5. Oh my god! They killed Kenny! But ever since season 6, something changed. Now Kenny rarely dies at all. But why? Well, let's go through his evolution, count the kills, and do some digging. Oh yeah, and do make sure to stay till the end to find out the definitive answer of the Kenny kill count. The Kenny dying gimmick started all the way back in the 1992 short Jesus vs Frosty. Although in this version, Cartman was called Kenny. Oh my god! Frosty killed Kenny! Dude! But the kid with Kenny's actual design wasn't safe either, also being killed by Frosty disguised as Santa Claus. In the follow-up short, Jesus vs Santa, Kenny is just one of several casualties beheaded by a psychic attack. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! And by the end of this short, rats soon gather to eat the rest of Kenny's remains, which would also become a part of this long-running South Park gag. In the Iron Ed South Park pilot from 1996, Kenny dies the very same way he does in the official series premiere. But the difference is, is that he comes back by the end of the pilot. Oh, hey Kenny. Hey, you're looking pretty good, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny's first official death in the series pulls no punches. A UFO blasts Kenny onto the street, he gets trampled on by a herd of cows, and then he gets run over. But for viewers who thought they'd seen the last of this beaten up orange kid, he inexplicably returns in the very next episode, Weight Gain 4000. It's here he seems to die twice, once from a TP prop landing on him, Oh my god! And the second from Mr. Garrison's attempted Kathy Lee Gifford assassination. So, does this count as one death or two deaths? Maybe the TP didn't actually kill him. And weirdly, this was a very similar question I had to ask myself for the episode Volcano, because when it seemed that he was crushed by a lava ball, he reappears very much alive by the end to accidentally be shot. Let's just pause it right here. I'm not even halfway through the first season of this kill count, and it's already confusing my little brain. But what I am going to say is that I am going to choose to count these four kills over the two episodes as official deaths because of Kenny's ability to return from the dead, which is a thing I'll explain a bit later. Anywho, in the series' first Halloween special, Pink Eye, it sees Kenny's bad luck continue when he's crushed by a Russian satellite. They killed Kenny! And while Kenny might not be technically alive throughout the episode, he also wasn't completely dead either. His embalming fluid had Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, how do you pronounce Worcestershire? Worcestershire sauce, in which it turned him into a zombie. The undead Kenny turned the town into a zombie apocalypse before the gang realizes that they'll have to destroy him in order to put a stop to the madness. And just when it looks like Zombie Kenny has finally returned, a statue goes and crushes him. So, the question is, does this count as one death or three deaths? Screw it. We all love zombies. Let's go and add them to the kill count. Whether it's being cooked in a microwave or touched by death, Kenny dies in all of the first eight episodes of the series. But then, in episode 9's Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh, we get a holiday miracle in that Kenny survives an episode for the first time ever. And even he's fully aware of this massive, massive achievement. Sentence feels unfinished. While Kenny surviving this episode would be a rarity for South Park's early seasons, at least it set a precedent that he didn't always have to die in every single episode. Even so, the show did decide to return to the status quo for the remainder of season 1, with the funniest death being in episode 12's Mecha Streisand. Here, Mecha Streisand and a giant robot of Leonard Moulton are fighting and it seems that Kenny is gonna get killed in the crossfire but he manages to escape, ending up in a much less dramatic game of tetherball. But he only wound up getting strangled. Absolutely tragic, but absolutely brilliant. Kenny's deaths in season two. Season 2's premiere of South Park proved to be another victory for Kenny as he managed to survive, but it was only because it was an episode that only focused on Terence and Philip. But since the next episode is an immediate follow-up to the season 1 finale, audiences got to see something they'd never seen before. Kenny being resurrected. Oh, hey Kenny! Kenny reappearing out of thin air finally explained how he came back with every episode. However, in later seasons, this reasoning would be retconned for a literal rebirth. 
But Kenny's time following this reappearance didn't last very long, electrocuting himself to restore the power in the hospital, and therefore revive Dr. Mephisto. What makes this death stand out so much is that it was the first time that Kenny willingly sacrificed himself to help others, sparking the first of his many selfless deaths. And perhaps this good deed generated some good karma for Kenny, as only two episodes later in Chicken Lover, Kenny manages to defy death multiple times, to the point where his friends get pretty pissed off. Oh my god, they've killed... God damn it! It's funny to see that this early into season two and Kenny's gimmick was already being made fun of by the showrunners, but they didn't let him off too lightly, crushing him with a tree during the end credits. Kenny isn't even safe during flashbacks, because in episode seven, he's killed by Fonzie's motorcycle and then abducted by the big black scary monster during what turns out to be one of Stan's dreams. Then in Summer Sucks, it's revealed that Kenny has been getting killed all the way back since he was a toddler, when he explodes while playing with firecrackers. Overall, Kenny dies in 17 episodes in season two, and the ways only get more and more creative, like being mauled by an evil goldfish, pierced by a bull, and getting his head bitten off by none other than Ozzy Osbourne. And you've got to really feel bad for the guy, because while they all sound painful enough, what's got to hurt even more is that his very own best friends just seem to laugh about his deaths. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving over into season three, and the showrunners still look to divert our expectations while still delivering the classic obligatory Kenny death. Season three's premiere Rainforest Shmain Forest is a landmark in Kenny's history. Not only was it the first time where he had a real love interest in Kelly, but it was also the first time where Kenny was killed and actively revived in the very same episode, if we ignore the episode when he was a zombie. But just when Kelly and Kenny were about to become an official couple, he was struck by lightning and presumed dead. So Stan and Carl proceed to do their classic catchphrase until Kelly picked it apart in a way we had never seen before. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! Who? Who killed him? They did. Who's they? Funnily enough, the they that Carl and Stan have been referring to for so many years are their very own voice actors, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, aka the guys that have been writing in Kenny's deaths. Kenny's season three deaths only get more and more random. He spontaneously combusts, gets crushed by the succubus, and in that same episode, he dies again and is eaten by rats. By this point, all that Kenny really stood for was being South Park's personal fodder, but that was all to change in the South Park movie. Kenny's Noble Sacrifices. South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut premiered midway through season three and you better believe that Kenny's death lived up to the film's title. It opens with the boys walking out of the Terrence and Philip movie and Kenny attempting to light his fart on fire instead engulfs his entire body in flames. And just when he's about to be picked up by an ambulance, a truck goes and pours salt on him. The surgeons attempt to keep him alive, but Let's just say they botched it. We accidentally replaced your heart with a baked potato. You have about three seconds to live. It only gets worse for Kenny when his trip to heaven takes a detour to the fiery pits of hell. But at least it means that Kenny is there to help Satan leave his abusive relationship with Saddam Hussein, destroying him, thus ending the war between America and Canada. Because of this, Satan grants Kenny a free wish, but instead of wishing to come back to life, Kenny wishes for things to return as they were before the war. So, not only was this the first time that we saw Kenny's face, but it also marked Kenny's most meaningful death. Goodbye, you guys. I guess it could be argued that he dies twice in the movie when he fades away, but I feel that he was already dead and he just rose up to heaven because of his good deed. And just a month later, Kenny made another noble sacrifice in episode 9's Jubilee. After being banished by Moses during Carl's Jubilee camp for falsely being Jewish, an anti-Semitic worshipper of Haman captures Moses in a conch shell. But Kenny once again puts others' needs before his own, freeing Moses by cracking his skull on it. He saved us. He saved all the Jews. Entering season four and the kills only got more creative, like when he was thrown into the river with cement shoes and his dream of becoming an acclaimed opera singer ended up by being gunned down in a raid. But perhaps season four's biggest contribution to the saga was revealing the lore behind Kenny's deaths in Cartman Joins Nambler. 
Here, Kenny goes out of his way to prevent his parents from having a baby when his mum gets pregnant. He's unsuccessful to the point where he gets himself run over by an ambulance, and it's then we see that Kenny's mother gives birth to a baby that looks just like Kenny. God, this must be the 50th time this has happened. 50 second. Things only got more fascinating in the very next episode, Cherokee Hair Tampons, where Stan is devastated by the idea that Carl could die, which pisses Kenny off so much because he's died countless times and no one has ever given a single shit. <laughs> Kenny would then die every episode of season 4 and 5, with the exception of episode 15's Fat Camp, where a boy dressed up as him and is killed instead. Yeah, they kind of killed Kenny's look-alike. And what's interesting is that in the 6th episode of the 5th season, it's unveiled that Cartman is fully aware of how often Kenny dies. The family's entitled to the rest of this. What, Kenny? He dies all the time! Kenny dies for good. Out of all of his deaths so far, the most devastating one came in Season 5, Episode 13's, aptly titled, Kenny Dies. Kenny can't die! Kenny can't die! <laughs> Unlike previously, Kenny's passing in the penultimate episode of Season 5 was a slow and painful one. The boys are told that he is dying of a terminal illness and could pass away, and they react to the news as though he's never died before in the show. Stan, you can't leave! I'm not the one who's leaving, he is! What had been a light and reoccurring gag throughout the series was suddenly treated with the weight and severity that death usually brings to people in real life. And most long-term watchers of the show knew that this death wasn't going to be like the others. This one was going to have long-term consequences. And what's worse is that we, the audience, don't actually get to see Kenny pass. We find out after the fact, and it's a real gut punch. I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to say goodbye. What's fascinating is that Trey Parker and Matt Stone considered killing Carl off instead, as they felt that Carl and Stan were far too similar characters. You know, it always seemed to us that like Kyle and Stan were really similar, and that's only because Matt and I are pretty similar, so it's like... But then the more we thought about it, we're like, no, and that's where the whole idea stemmed for, let's kill Kenny. By killing off Kenny, at least it meant that they didn't have the burden of thinking of new ways of how to kill him for every episode. A task that they had grown severely tired of by this point. Because we were basically sick of killing Kenny. Right, right. That's so right. we were like, let's kill him, let's have him die and he'll be gone forever. This time, the consequences of Kenny's death would last beyond a single episode, as he'd be absent for almost the entire of season 6, only returning by the end of episode 17. Oh, hey Kenny. Dude, where have you been? <laughs> As for why Kenny was killed off in the first place, well, not only were they completely bored of killing him, but they started to have a growing love for another adorable character. We knew we wanted Butters to, to take his place somehow, and really, we were really starting to love Butters as a character. In fact, Trey and Matt loved Butters so much that they wanted to make him a member of the Core Four. Therefore, Kenny had to skedaddle. So, they positioned the episode Kenny Dies right before Butters' first episode, therefore reintroducing us to Butters. The, the best thing to do was, like, let's just do a whole episode about him so that then the next season we kind of really introduce him as the, the, new, the new Kenny. And with Kenny away, Trey and Matt could definitely play, fleshing Butters out into a more deserving member of the Core Four. Therefore, by the time Kenny returned, Butters was a firm fan favourite. After returning to the series, Kenny managed to survive, and for a fair few seasons. He survived season 12, season 18, 19, 20, 25, and 26, and only died once in season 7, 8, 11, 15, 16, 17, 21, 22, and 24. He died three times in season 9 and 13, and five times in season 14. I should also mention that his World of Warcraft character is killed twice in season 10. However, I won't be adding this to the final kill count. So, whereas before the question was how will Kenny die today, it is now which episode will Kenny die in if at all? Which I feel is a really, really good thing. Kenny's death was a really well played out joke and the writers did make a real effort into turning him into an actual character instead of just a joke. Because he was no longer killed off halfway through an episode, Kenny became a far more well-rounded character. He became a protective guardian to his little sister, even threatening his own parents to take better care of them. 
We treat our kids better and we don't beat each other up as much. Out of the boys, Kenny is the most selfless, caring and kind, like when he used his wages earned from the city walk to pay for a new doll for his little sister. And in one of my personal favourite moments was when he became Princess Kenny. I just love how he can both play a broody and dark persona like Mysterion and then a sweet and lovable princess. Kenny's got some range. But at least the show's introduction kept Kenny's death going to remind us of just how he started on the show. From season 7's to 11, Kenny's head was cut off with a pair of scissors, which, when added together, is a total of 71 times. And speaking of character development, let's talk about Mysterion. While fans weren't exactly clamouring for an explanation as to why Kenny often dies and revives, we got one anyway in Season 14's Coon vs Coon and Friends. Now, I am currently writing a video on the entire Coon saga, but basically the kids all dress up and pretend to be superheroes. And it's pretty pretty awesome, and some of my favourite favourite episodes. But anyway, Kenny's alter ego is Mysterion and is the only superhero to have actual powers. And aside from Mintberry Crunch of course. And it's in this episode that Kenny brings up the fact that no one remembers him repeatedly dying. I die over and over, only to wake up in my bed like nothing happened. It's revealed in the previous episode, Mysterion Rises, that Kenny's parents attended the Cult of Cthulhu. Therefore, it's implied that Cthulhu's powers is the reason why Kenny can never remain dead. And in the episode Coon vs Coon and Friends, Mysterion dies on three separate occasions. And what I love about this reveal is that it does explain kind of what is going on with Kenny's deaths, but it doesn't give us all the answers. It still manages to keep us fascinated with Kenny's struggle against his countless deaths, and therefore makes Mysterion all the more compelling character. Kenny's deaths in extended media. In case you didn't know, Kenny has also died in many other ways that further the show in the movies. There are 10 South Park special shorts and commercials in which Kenny dies there too, including a 1997 Comedy Central promo, 1997's Jay Leno short, an online short entitled A Mother's Courage, 1998 New Year's Countdown, the 12th Annual American Comedy Awards, the Primetime Emmy Awards show in 1999, a music video from the Chef Aid South Park album, a short film that was featured on a Monty Python television special, a short created for the MTV Movie Awards in 2000, and the real South Park sketch on Comedy Central Netherlands. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! There's even original shorts that play during the LA Kings hockey team, and I found at least six where Kenny dies. And he's died many times in South Park's video games. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! In the 1998 video game, Kenny dies on five different occasions, including when he was killed in a commercial for the game, and in South Park Rally, he dies in the game's opening credits. And in South Park's Pinball, there's a Kill Kenny bonus that's activated when the pinball is knocked into Kenny's slot three times, but unfortunately, I won't be including this in the final tally. But I guess I will count this animated PlayStation trailer of the game when Kenny dies and is eaten by rats. In the game South Park the Fractured But Whole, Mysterion can sacrifice himself when facing enemies, but can be revived, again, this one is very impossible to calculate. And in South Park Stick of Truth, you can unlock an achievement for letting Kenny die in combat 10 times over the course of the game. Now I won't be including this, but what I will count is the ending of the game. Here it requires you to fart on Princess Kenny in order to save the town. And apparently in Carmen's escape room, Kenny can be killed by turning on a fan. But I couldn't find any footage to back that one up. And lastly, he can be killed twice in South Park Phone Destroyer. So if we only count the cutscenes and the trailers, that's a total of 10 kills across the video games. And I haven't even spoken about the various times he's been killed in the merchandise, like this dog toy. But let's not complicate things even further. The total death count. So, including all of the flashbacks and one dream sequence, Kenny has died a total of 100 times in the main series, as well as twice in the movies, so that's a total kill count of 102. 
And if you want to include that time where Kenny possessed Rob Schneider, then it's 103. But if you want to add on the three times in the unaired early episodes, ten times in the shorts, six times in the LA King shorts, ten times in the video games, and the 71 times he's been beheaded in the opening sequence, then technically he's died 203 times.